As for American Taliban John Walker Lind, he remains in Marine hands in Afghanistan as officials try to figure out how to deal with this case. Alan Pizzi is with the Marines at Camp Rhino. In an ironic twist to the war on terror, John Walker Lint, an American caught fighting with the Taliban, is being held at Camp Rhino, the U.S. Marine base in southern Afghanistan. A Marine spokesman said Lint is being held for his own protection and will be handed over to civilian authorities as soon as possible. Half a mile from where the American Taliban member is being kept, Marines today laid to rest an Afghan killed fighting on their side. The full military honors for the Pashtun militiaman who died along with three U.S. Special Forces soldiers when a smart bomb went astray was probably unprecedented in Afghanistan. The Marines were at pains to respect Islamic tradition. This ceremony is not about religion or faith or who's right or wrong. It is, however, a reminder of the cost of freedom. A Muslim Marine corporal recited a verse from the Quran in Arabic. Representatives of every unit here stood as official mourners, including the overall commander, Brigadier General James Mattis. Exact grid references of this lonely grave will be given to the dead man's family, along with the spent shell casings from the 21-gun salute, the last public part of the ceremony. The Marines' mission has refocused slightly in the wake of the collapse of the Taliban in Kandahar. Ordinary Taliban foot soldiers who decide the war is over and lay down their arms will be allowed to get on with their lives. But for members of Osama bin Laden's al-Qaeda network, there will be no amnesty. Every Marine above the rank of sergeant has photos of those on the most wanted list. As one officer put it, the day of reckoning for September 11th will soon be at hand and will help ensure an Afghan fellow warrior did not die in vain. Alan Pizzi with U.S. Marines in southern Afghanistan. How and why John Walker Lynn became a member of the Taliban remains a mystery, even to those closest to him. Jerry Bowen has more on Lynn's journey and the family still trying to understand what happened. This is 20-year-old John Walker Lynn, the American Taliban, under interrogation by CIA agent Johnny Spann in the Mazari Sharif prison minutes before the uprising that would claim the agent's life. Who brought you here? Who brought you here? And days before Walker Lynn was flushed out of the prison bunkers with other fighters, pledging his allegiance to the Taliban. Do you believe what you doing? But how could a child of affluence, raised as a teenager in wealthy Marin County, California, end up on the front line of war? UCLA Islamic law professor Khalid Abu Afadal says the conversion starts at home. Typically, uh, they are uh, from uh, unstable or fragmented or dysfunctional families. Walker Lynn converted to Islam at age 16, studied and prayed at the local Mill Valley Mosque, and went to Yemen at age 18 with his parents' support and approval to study Islam. You're suddenly a very, very important person. You're celebrated, you're, you are praised, you are, especially that you're a white convert. I have seen a report that he carried an AK-47, and I really can't reconcile that with the John I know. His parents believe their son was brainwashed into fighting. He didn't go to Afghanistan to work against his own country or to make war with the United States. He went there in what I would call a misguided effort to help the Taliban establish their government. But is he a latter-day Patty Hearst, allegedly brainwashed into becoming a warrior, or a traitor to his own country, or an accessory to the murder of the CIA agent who tried to question him? For now, he's in the hands of the U.S. military, and waiting back home for him are his nervous parents and the attorney and PR firm they've hired to argue he was just a young man in search of faith who accidentally wandered into war. Jerry Bowen, CBS News, Los Angeles.